Nope, can't do it. What's going on, big guy? Eh, my stream just isn't feeling as spicy as I'd like it to, you know? As spicy? It just feels a little bit bland. Like there's nothing unique about it. Like it could use a little bit more pomp and circumstance. Isn't that a graduation song? I, I just want some cool options that make viewers go, whoa, how did he do that? Sounds complicated. But I don't want it to be complicated. Sounds improbable? This all feels very improbable. You can hear me, right? I'm just, I'm gonna call Nutty. He's an expert at this stuff. Yeah, okay. Yeah, what up, Nutty? I, uh, I could use your help with something. Oh, you want to make your stream super high-end and advanced while also being simple enough that basically anyone can do it? Yes. Yes, I do. Before we get started on the video, I'd like to give a huge thank you to the sponsor, NZXT, and their build lineup. NZXT Build is the simplest way to get a gaming PC without building it yourself. Just choose the game you want to play, set a budget, and the NZXT Build Configurator it does the rest for you. You can get a custom PC built and cable managed for you for a $99 service fee, or just pick up a pre-built. They've got a bunch of different configurations, budgets, specs, all the things, all the things. Every build PC is backed with a two year all-in-one warranty for parts, labor, and RAM overclocking. If you'd like to pick one up yourself, use the link in the description below. I'm excited about this video. I've been planning on this one for I, a month or so now, and it just hasn't hasn't come to fruition yet. Whenever you do collaborations like this, there's always, it's just an extra variable that even if two people are on the ball, I, I don't know, it takes longer. It's harder to do it. But I hit up my friend Nutty, who's been a member of my community as well as a mod in my Discord for like, I think over a year now, who also happens to be someone that at least I would consider to be one of the creative authorities when it comes to OBS and streaming. His stream, if you look at it, is, is just insanely beautiful and does stuff I've never seen anyone else do. And he does some of the most advanced tutorials on these high-end plugins and strategies that you can use to make your stream look amazing. So hit him up. He's in this video. We're gonna go over five of our favorite advanced tricks that make your stream just, just that much better than everyone else's. I'm going to do two of my favorites. He's going to do three of his. I'm interested to hear how many of these you already knew of or how to do and how many of these are brand new to you. Leave those in the in the comments. And by the way, if you have any other questions about some of these things we're mentioning or maybe have some suggestions, both of us stream at Twitch. Link to both of our Twitch channels in the description below. Feel free to jump into either of them. Ask some questions. If it's an advanced OBS question, uh, you know, maybe jump in Nutty's, not mine. <laughs> He's a better bet than I am. It, just, it is what it is. Take it away, Nutty. All right. First advanced OBS tip, instant rewind. Now, some of you OBS veterans may think you know where I'm going with this. A lot of streamers like Shroud and Dr. Lupo have these really nice instant replays for their stream, but I didn't say replay, I said rewind. Now let me explain the difference. Most streamers that have an instant replay function, they'd hit a hotkey, maybe it plays a stinger transition, and then just plays a video of whatever happened in the last 30 seconds or so. But this effect is different because when you hit a hotkey, it actually rewinds your gameplay. This is great because you can actually see the rewind happening, which not only looks really unique and professional, but also gives you a little bit of context of what's actually happening on your stream. You can also set up another hotkey to fast forward your gameplay so that it catches up with your real time gameplay. Now, all of this was possible using a couple plugins for OBS Studio. The first is called Dynamic Delay, and this is what's gonna allow you to do the rewinding and fast forwarding part of this effect. But I also wanted to add a little bit of VHS distortion to my gameplay to really sell the effect. And to do that, I use a another plugin called OBS Shader Filter, which allows you to add custom effects to any source in OBS. And one of those effects that I added was a custom VHS filter, which allowed me to do that distortion effect to my gameplay. And for some finishing touches, I just created some simple graphics that say rewind, fast forward, instant replay. These are just simple PNG files that you can create in Photoshop or GIMP or whatever you want. Once you've got all of that, all you need is your favorite macro software. It could be a stream deck, touch portal, it's your choice. You're gonna create a macro to enable and disable all these filters and graphics at the right time. I'm not gonna go through the whole macro right now because I already did a full in-depth tutorial for doing this effect on my personal channel, which you can find linked in the description box down below. I would like to talk about one of my favorite things about my previous stream design that I miss 
and I'm considering bringing back in the next upcoming iteration of my stream that I'm working on right now. I managed to find a way to get certain elements of your stream, like for example, your camera border or part of your overlay, individual sources to animate in or even fade in by themselves. This doesn't require any plugins at all. It just requires some kind of device or controller that can handle macros or multiple inputs in a row. For example, you can use Elgato with their multi-action function, or you can even use something like touch portal on your own phone that can set off a macro. But let me show you how this works real quick. Let's go ahead and pull up an instance of this happening on screen here. You can see my transition bring forward my gameplay scene immediately followed by my camera border animating into place with my camera then fading in inside the camera border. I know that was a little bit fast, so let's play it again real quick. But what's actually going on here is there are two separate transitions between three separate scenes. The first scene is obviously the intermission scene where I'm talking, followed by my transition to the second scene, which is entirely just my gameplay and nothing else on top of it. This serves as kind of an intermediate move along scene to allow really cool stuff to happen. For example, on this scene is that animated file of my camera border coming in. I use my stream deck and I have it switch scenes, then activate that animation. As soon as that animation finishes, the macro then activates the final scene where that transition between the two of them is just a fade in. So everything else in front of the scene now fades into place, including the camera border, which fades in right behind that animation before the animation disappears. If you'd like to go a little more in depth with this, I've got a whole video on this. I'll put a link to it in the description down below. But the TLDR of this whole thing is you have your scene, you have your stinger transition to another scene, which is just a blank gaming slate with your animations that happen, followed by a crossfade transition to the final scene. And yeah, when you're all done, as you've seen before, it looks like this. And I think that's pretty cool. Next tip, 3D sources. So with this effect, you're gonna be able to tilt and rotate any source that you want in OBS in 3D space. It could be your camera, your gameplay, literally anything that you want. I find this useful for things like an intermission scene where your camera might be full screen with your gameplay shrunk down in the corner. What you can do is you could add just a subtle tilt to your gameplay just to add a little bit of visual flair to your stream. Or if you wanted to, you can add some rotation to your camera so it sort of looks like you're looking into your gameplay. I don't know, it's up to you, be creative. Now this effect is also going to need a plugin for OBS Studio called Stream Effects. And this is gonna add some extra features to OBS. It's super useful. In fact, Harris is gonna talk a little bit more about it in his next advanced tip. One of the extra features that it adds is called 3D Transform. And it's really simple. You just right click on any source that you want. You go into filters and you add a new filter that says 3D Transform. You can play around the sliders to see what each of them do. You can tilt, you can rotate, you can flip your camera upside down. I don't know, do whatever you want. The, the world is your playground or something. Is that a saying? I don't know, moving on. Stream Effects also adds a cool option called Source Mirror, which allows you to create a mirror of any source that you want. You're gonna wanna use this option because if you're gonna add some 3D to your gameplay for your intermission scene, you probably don't want your gameplay to be 3D in your gameplay scene. Now, if you're feeling really creative like this guy, you can create this really unique bent webcam effect, which I'll admit, it's pretty good. I'd give it a solid eight out of 10. If you wanna know how this effect is done, I've done a video breaking down this effect so that you can recreate it for your own stream. My other one is a much more subtle approach and I love subtlety when it comes to style and design. I think the loud designs are more distracting and annoying than the, the clean, simple ones, especially when there's something really cool going on that you maybe don't really notice, when the design is maybe a little bit more invisible and it just, you feel it rather than see it. With this one, I'm talking about something I've dabbled in for a couple of years now, since before the channel even blew up, and it's translucency. My current design, I'm using translucency in a much more subtle way, and I plan on implementing it a little bit more in the next design. But you can see on my gameplay scene, at the bottom of my camera, I've got my little widget down there. And this can be any widget, it can be any metric, anything you want, including some of the ones that we've released to you guys for free, or even, for example, the Streambeats widget that we've released for free. By the way, Streambeats is copyright-free music 
for streamers and, and YouTubers, you should use it in the background music of your stream. Uh, links to that in the description down below. But I use it with a very simple custom widget. And you can see as you look in the white portions of there, you can see through to my camera but it's a little bit blurry. It's almost like looking through a stained glass window. This is done using the Stream Effects plugin, which is very simple to download. I'll link to that in the description down below. It comes with a handful of different plugins, such as Source Mirror, 3D transforming of certain scenes, which I think Nutty's gonna talk about, as well as Blur. When you install Stream Effects, you'll notice that there's a brand new filter called Blur, and you can control a handful of really cool things with it, including the type of blur, the amount of blur, and a, I don't know what it's called, a blur crop. I could turn on my PC and look, let's just call it a blur crop. But how this effect works is over the very bottom of my camera, I have a simple rectangular shape that is a single color, in this case, white. And I set that white shape to be semi-transparent. So I turn the opacity down to, I think it's 70 or 80%, but that's kind of up to your taste. Then I set the blur effect to my camera and I crop that effect all the way down right to the line of that white shape. So the only space that's blurred is behind the white rectangle. That now tricks your eye into thinking that the rectangle itself is what's actually blurring what's behind it. I'd love to see what you guys come up with with this translucent effect and how you take that and change it from my simple kind of glassy, almost frosty look to something completely different. So if you end up using this and doing something different with it, please tweet it at me. My Twitter is in the description below. Uh, I'd love to see it. Final tip animated scene transitions. Stinger transitions have become super popular. There's a lot of websites out there where you can even buy Stinger transitions to add to your stream. But let's say you wanted to do something a little more professional where your camera will start full screen and then shrink down into the corner to reveal your gameplay. Or maybe you wanna have your camera slide around to different positions on screen. Well, um, good news, Kevin, now you can do that thanks to a plugin called Move Transition. Move Transition has quickly become my all-time favorite plugin for OBS, and one of the things that it adds is a new transition type called Move. And using this new Move Transition type will take your stream from looking boring like this and turn it into something that looks more interesting like this. But that's not it. You can even set it up so that on your intermission scene, you can get your gameplay footage shrunk down in the corner and just slide it out of frame. Not only is this just super pretty to look at, but it's also really practical because sometimes your gameplay is covering up part of your camera. So you just hit a button on your stream deck, your gameplay slides off screen, and then now your viewers can see your entire webcam uncovered. Oh, and by the way, if you're on Streamlabs OBS, there's a very similar function called motion which comes baked right in and doesn't require any plugins. Now, some of you might be asking, Nutty, I want something really advanced. I want you to blow my mind. And to that I say, this is a YouTube video and that's not how this works. I can't actually hear what you're saying. But remember that tip I showed you about 3D sources in OBS? Yeah, you can actually animate that. That's gonna require more detail than I'll be able to go into this video, but I've done a couple of videos on Move Transition on my personal channel. And trust me, it won't be the last either because there's way more things that you can do with this plugin. Well guys, I hope you found this interesting. Again, which of these did you know about? Which ones did you not know about? Which ones are you going to try? Leave them in the description down below or come and talk with one of us in our Twitch streams. I stream every Monday, Wednesday. I don't know when Nutty's stream schedule is. Maybe I'll have him tell you at the end of his last one. Maybe he already did. Anyway, link to those in the description down below as well. Or if you have some questions, you want to jump into a community that knows more than we do because there are over 100,000 of them. There's a massive Discord where you can not only make friends, find collaborations, meet other streamers, but uh, also that's where you can download all the stream beats. If you want to put them in your own YouTube video like we're doing here, links to all the stream beats downloads right in the Discord. Links to that in the description down below. And as always, happy streaming.